Hello, what's up? It's Perva, and today is going to be vlog number five. Um, so pretty much this week we learned about understanding evidence and the different kinds of evidences used by different authors and how that can really help enhance an essay or a paper written by them. Um, there's different kinds of evidence that you can use. You can use, you know, very um, statistical information. You can use references from TV shows, from movies, from journals, from textbooks to anything. And pretty much this week we just really went deep into um, understanding how different pieces of evidences can help support different authors' papers. Um, so when w during our discussions we had to write about certain authors and what kind of evidence they use and how it helped their papers. So that's what I want to be discussing today. Um, in Kubi and Kasazamali, I don't know how to say the name at all, it's really long. <laughs> um, pretty much, the evidence used by that author in the reading pop culture essays uh, was very clear and informative. Um, the author used tons of statistical um, evidence and information um, from like psychologists and professors and scientists, uh, and they are all pr uh, credible and reliable sources, and that's something we also talked about a couple of vlogs ago. Um, picking a reliable and credible source. That's very important and when you have great um, people, like very knowledgeable people to back up your statements, it's always great to have that. Um, so in this case, these professors are also similar to being like a .org or .edu or .gov kind of information and it's getting straight sent from very well-known professional people. Um, and the author in this, uh, in this in this essay, the author used a lot of literary devices such as metaphors to relate to the effects of drugs while watching TV. That's pretty much what this essay was about. It was about how um, the effects of drugs can like lead to like the effects of drugs and watching TV. Pretty much comparing those two, and used lots of metaphors to explain that, which is nice because metaphors are and other literary devices are great ways to kind of engage the reader and keep them very interested. Um, in Roxanne Gray, uh, Gay's um, essay, she used a lot of um, evidence, uh, and it was more comparative. She used two different TV. She used like shows such as this one TV show called Girls, and that was on HBO. And she used this show to compare her own lifestyle to the TV show, um, and how it was being represented. In the show, she discusses she discusses how it's not very relatable because in the show they represent women in one way when in reality a woman should not be labeled at all. Pretty much in girls they they explain women to be, you know, acting a certain way and there's a proper way girls should act, dress, um, proper uh, etiquette, everything. And pretty much the author is just trying to state that why do women have these kind of, um, why are they f supposed to be molded into one certain way rather than being free to themselves? Why do women have to cook? Why is it stereotype that women have to cook, clean, wash after their husbands, raise the kids, when in fact they shouldn't be labeled or stereotyped like that at all? They should be able to do whatever they like to do. But in the show, women, uh, girls, um, it kind of is very specific, kind of pointing out those specific stereotypes, and she's not the biggest fan of that. Um, totally understandable. <laughs> um, the essay written by Kantar, um, he used a lot of uh, film analysis to help him um, depict to depict the American dream and see if it was actually kind of like the American nightmare. Um, the American dream is a very broad topic and uh, the author used um, a sh TV show called The Walking Dead to kind of help back up his reasoning where it, the American dream or if it actually isn't or if it's, if it's both depending on people. So pretty much in the TV show there's all these zombies and people are fighting to kill these zombies and you get bitten, you become a zombie, and so on. So pretty much, he shows the progress of how anything is possible, even though things can go downhill really quickly, um, that people will still be able to overcome that and come together and, in a way, their own American dream. So that's something that he was talking about. He didn't really use like statistical information. He used more like film analysis and was providing evidence through that. Um, and then our last author is Ken Auletta. Um, the evidence used by this author was Netflix, um, and had a and how it has a huge impact on online TV show and movie broad uh, streaming. Um, Netflix has now become such an involved.
kind of outlet to watch TV and it's kind of brought down the movie industry a lot because and raised up TV show industry because before people would turn on the TV and they'd be watching every other episode of a show because you're not going to watch every single day and watch it consecutively but with now Netflix you could watch TV shows anytime anytime you want and you only want to watch a couple episodes no one's going to sit and watch TV for two hours straight that's why the TV shows are more convenient because they're like 30 minutes um, whereas movies are like two hours long and you'd maybe watch that on the TV you know beforehand but you wouldn't really watch that as much on Netflix so he's pretty much describing how Netflix really had a big impact on TV shows streaming and the entire industry in total so yes that's what we discussed in this week's show.